What is going on guys? Welcome to the channel and today we are going to cover quite an advanced topic in Django RAM and before we dive in, here's some background. I remember once I was asked what's the difference between these two expressions that you see on the screen right now and to be honest I thought that they were the same things and they filter data the same way but turned out that I was wrong and the truth is that these expressions behave differently in some cases and today I'm gonna to explain why and when these expressions behave differently and it should take me a couple of minutes to explain and if you can resist the urge of clicking away right now then I hope that after watching this video you're going to understand how Django ORM works a little bit better especially how it handles joints also another thing is if you're trying to get a job as a web developer or if you're trying to change your current job you need to pass an interview if you're not some kind of a rockstar developer that can get a job without an interview and by the way if you were able to get a job without an interview leave a comment below and tell us how you've done this i think it will be interesting for everybody but anyway if you are a regular developer like i am you need to go to the interview and on the technical interview the interviewer might ask you to explain how filters work in Django so why not be prepared now with all that said let's dive in let's say we have a Django project with these two simple models we have courses and reviews and every review is attached to some course so basically we have one to many relationship between courses and reviews. Now let's play a little bit with Django ORM and let's use the filter method. I'm gonna open the shell right now that prints SQL queries as they are executed. And this shell is not built into Django. You will need to install Django extensions library if you wanna have the same shell as I do. In order to start, let's just filter courses by their own fields. And it's the most basic filter we can do. If you look at the queries that were generated, you'll see that they look absolutely the same. So it doesn't matter if we chain filters or if we pass all conditions to a single filter call. The result will be the same in both cases. Now things start to become tricky when we filter objects based on a money to money field or based on a reverse foreign key. Just to illustrate this, let's try to filter courses by reviews. As you can see now, the results of filtering courses are different. The first filter found only one course and the second filter found two courses. Also, the queries that were generated and sent to the database are different. The query for the second filter, as you can see, is a little bit more complicated. So in order to understand why these filters produce different results, first of all, let me show you the data that we have right now in the database. We have course and review tables and what's interesting for us right now is a review table. It has 8 rows and every course has 2 reviews except for the course with ID 3. It doesn't have any reviews. Also I have highlighted some important cells with green and blue colors and these cells are important because of the values that they have. We used these values when we were filtering courses in the examples that I showed you before. Now let's get back to our examples and let's take a look at our first filter again. Here we are joining course table with a review table and then we apply where close. Basically we are just trying to get courses that have at least one review that at the same time has the value equals to 5 and the year when it was created is 2020. And if we look at data again we will see that we only have one review that has 5 and 2020 at the same time and it's the first review and this review is attached to the course with id 1 and that's why we had only this course in a query set now i would say that this filter is quite intuitive and easy to understand so let's take a look at chaining filters right now chaining filters are trickier as you can see we are joining course table with review table two times and if you look at where close, you will see that the first condition uses the first join table and the second condition uses the second join table. 
It's quite difficult to understand this query, but let's try to visualize it. Let's take a look at the result of this select if it didn't have where clause. So we are going to send this query to a database and in this select we are joining course table with review table two times as well and we are showing data from all tables here. The result of this select looks like that. As you can see every single course has four rows. Basically we have all possible combinations of values and if we try to add where close to our select we will end up with this result. That's because we only have two rows where T2 value column has 5 and T3 date column has 2020. Now let's make a conclusion. In Django, if we want to filter data, we use filter method. This filter method works differently depending on how we use it and depending on what relationships our models have. If we filter our course model, let's say by its own fields or by a one-to-one -one relationship or by a foreign key, the result will be the same no matter how we use this filter method. We can chain filters or we can pass all conditions to a single filter call. It doesn't matter, the result will be the same. However, when we start to filter by a reverse foreign key or by a many-to-many -many relationship, then things start to become trickier. When we pass all conditions to a single filter method call, these conditions are applied simultaneously. In this example, we get courses that have at least one review that at the same time has the value equals to 5 and the year when it was created is 2020. When we change filters, these multiple filter calls are applied independently. So we start from the first filter. When we apply this first filter, we get courses that have reviews with value equals to 5 and we have three courses with such reviews, courses with ID 1, 2 and 5. Then we apply another filter, it filters by day 2020, and we only have two courses that have reviews with value equals to 5 and reviews with day 2020. It's the first and the second course. The course with ID 5 doesn't have reviews with day 2020. That's why we don't have this course in the result. So that's it for today guys, if you are still watching this video, appreciate it so much and if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and if you are new to the channel, my name is Dennis and this channel is all about my and web development and growing as a full stack Python web developer. If that appeals to you, consider subscribing and if you'd like to connect with me even further, you can follow me on Twitter or on my Instagram, links will be in the description. So thanks for watching guys, see you!